Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your your dad's a blue collar trades tradesman from Texas, right? He was like a yeah. He owned his own uh, electrical company. Uh, he was a contractor. It doesn't and... s- sound like the usual type of dad that's like go to Hollywood and become an actor, like really supportive of that kind of thing. Uh, got a little bit of that. My brother was you know three and a half years ahead of me, and uh, they came through at University of Houston where he was. Uh, going to school and for the last picture show to casting. Mm-hmm. And it was like 73, 72, and uh, got a part. You know, uh, the last picture show was a pretty amazing movie back then. Ben Johnson was in it and uh, Sybil Shepherd, and uh, directed by Peter Bogdanovich. And uh, he did that. And then a year later, Bogdanovich called him out to, to Hollywood to do a small part in What's Up, Doc? which is a Barbra Streisand, Ryan O'Neill yeah. movie. And so he stayed. And when my dad finally saw my brother on camera, he said, well, that's my boy. Ah, interesting. <laughs> because he was, a, he was a frustrated actor himself. But uh, it, he didn't really know how to do it. Acting? And, well, he didn't know how to go about really doing like moving out to Hollywood oh, and getting yeah. an agent and all the rest of that stuff. You know, he thought you just got discovered. I think a lot My of dad. people think that. I think they do. You know, I really do think they do. And then for me, my brother was like a really good example for me because I didn't know at the time if I wanted <clears throat> uh, to be an actor. That was back during the time where I wanted to be a veterinarian and uh, or a forest ranger. <laughs> a forest ranger. You'd be fighting uh, fires right now. Yes, I would. I'm evacuated from my house right now. Are you really? Mm-hmm. I saw the smoke when I flew in this morning. Yeah. And I was Where shocked. Where did you fly in from? San Jose. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, and our flight originally was canceled, and I was like, you got to get me to L.A. I got I got Dennis Quaid coming here. I can't stand him up for this bullshit fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm uh, a refugee, I guess you'd call me, right? A vagabond? Yeah. An evacuee? That's you started- what I am. In fact, Billy Bob and... Thornton and I are at the same hotel. Oh, I was wondering, maybe, you know, you came here originally, slept on your brother's couch. Maybe you just back to the same couch. No, but it's really amazing. Um, I'm staying at this hotel that's off Sunset. And they, the room I'm staying in occupies the very same space of the first apartment that I lived in here in L.A. Really? Yes. What are the odds of that? Paloma. I, I, mean, I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah. That's. Uh, are you, you happy? You think that's about a sign of something? Not really. It's just a weird coincidence. I'm not one of those. I don't like believe in that stuff. Really. You don't believe in coincidences. Coincidences exist for sure. But you don't think it goes beyond that? Nah. You sure you're not looking deep enough? Maybe, but maybe, <laughs> maybe you chose that place because of that reason, subconsciously. Hmm. That does knock the odds down a little bit. Yeah. You're right because I'm familiar with that place. Right. Like, maybe you went, you know, I know this neighborhood. I'll just, is there a hotel there? Oh, yeah, look at this one. Yeah, how, how about that? I'm right yeah. in the same place. Oh, okay. Yeah, like your yeah. subconscious brain saw it coming a mile away. All right, I'll let that one go yeah. then. So, all right. So you started <laughs> bugging agents for interviews, getting rejected everywhere when well, you first I, got out here? <clears throat> I came out here, and um, I got my 8x10s done, and I sent out that in a kind of hyperbolic, uh, hyperbole of... A resume to every agent <laughs> a bu- in town. A bullshitty resume. And, uh, yes. Oh, because I had done nothing uh, except, you know, college drama. And uh, I got turned down by everybody. And so then I started looking in Variety and Hollywood Reporter in the back. They would have this section called Films in the Future. And it would list who the casting director was, who the director was, and the name of the film. And so I started calling casting directors' offices just to try to get an interview in general you know, with. Oh, man. And what a grind. So, yeah, I would call them up, and nine out of ten would say no, and but one would say yes. And then I first couple I went in and uh, had an interview for nothing except just to have an interview, and I looked at my shoes. Cause, the whole time? Well, the first couple of them, because I didn't know what to say right. or what to do, but I learned how to do interviews that way. Step one, don't look at your shit. Like, what charisma this well, man has. Yeah. <laughs> you got to kind of figure it out. 
why didn't you give up? A lot of people, I think, give up pretty quickly in this town once they figure out how hard it is to make it. Um, I don't know. I really had, I guess I had a lot of ambition, and I had a real purpose that I was uh, never going to work as anything else but an actor. I'd been out here a couple of summers before visiting my brother, and, you know, I parked cars mm -hmm. over on uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, and uh, I had, this time I was just going to be an actor. So it was about nine months, and when one of those casting directors who originally turned me down, Gino Havens, I uh, met with him, and he called an agent for me. And who had turned me down. Sure. But uh, by his recommendation, I got an agent, and three months, months later, I got a job. That's crazy. Wow. You must have been jumping up and down on Randy's couch after that. <laughs> <laughs> this t yeah, I was off Randy's couch by that time. He didn't put up with that but for about a couple of months. But, uh, yes, I was. And then I got a job another about a year later after that, and then another job, and then I got breaking away. The yeah. things really changed. Yeah, that was kind of the breakout hit. And I, I know you've said... The second chances, the third and the fourth, are what you need to have success as an actor. You got to yes. have a large capacity for rejection. Yes. And while it still feels ba as bad today as it always did, I'm yes. able to let it go. More. Yes, it does. It still feels just as bad. Huh? Oh yes. Dang. Yes, of course. Doesn't it to you? Uh, yeah. I just figured. When some somebody tells point you, future, "Hey, hey, we're out of the carrot cake. We uh, we we don't have any more." Yeah, that and you really wanted it. Doesn't that make you feel bad? It does. I take that personally. Yeah, but I, I'm learning to let that go. I just figured it happened. It got easier over time. Yeah. Yes, it mm. does. Or or never. Mm, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shit. No. Otherwise, I'd be I'd be retired. I suppose that's true, right? You know. Yeah. You still gotta have fire in your belly. How do you feel about having fire in your belly now versus like 20, 30 years ago? Oh, it's so much more fun. Now. Yeah. It really. Uh, I've got to the place in my career where <clears throat> um, I don't have to take a job uh, for, I'm not trying to get anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm already there. I already missed it. One of the two. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm just having a fun time doing uh, roles, the different types of roles. And, you know, music is really starting to blossom in my life as well. And uh, so if I feel, have a, if fear goes up my spine when I'm offered something, that means I should probably do it. Oh, yeah, just kind of that's the sign. To get you. yourself out of the – you know, I know so many actors that spend their entire careers with the same haircut. Yeah. Oh, that's – Think that, about it. That's kind of scary. To have think the, about it. The same haircut basically meaning you're doing the same thing. Yeah. Over and over. Yeah. Works for a select few yes, action Yes, it does heroes. really work really well for a select few. Because that's who you want to see. Mm -hmm. But I I just wasn't that guy. Yeah. Because I had bad hair days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that and, like, those those guys are always, like, action heroes, right? It's like Schwarzenegger or Stallone or something. Yeah, or comedians. Similar. Comedians, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. If they if they stay relevant the whole time. That's what's scary about comedy. Staying, staying relevant, I guess, is really kind of the <laughs> the main thing. Yeah. That, throughout a career, isn't it? I th I think so, yeah. I have some questions about that, obviously, as well, because I'm like, is there any time that you're thinking, oh, crap, you know, I'm. what if I'm not relevant anymore? Mm -hmm. Or, like, what if I'm losing relevance? I know you... you I said felt you that way. Yeah? I in, felt, yes. In the 90s, I know you said you had uh, a valley. Yes, in the 90s, and, uh, you know, about uh, four or five, five, six years ago, I, I felt that way. Um, I think it's that... If you're in the if you're in the arts, or even just, I think growing as a person in uh, the many different stages of your life, you need to you need to change yourself uh, about every seven years. What they call a seven year itch, I think. Um, I have heard that. That's the only way to kind of grow I th at something. Do you agree? Yeah, I think. I mean, I don't know about the seven year thing. For me, I feel like it's been more qu more quick than that. But that's because I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. Yeah, but people hate change right off the bat. I do. When somebody yeah. comes in and tells me they're going to change this thing that fits right into my routine really <laughs> well, I'm going to be dragged kicking and screaming into it. But right, it's it's a good th it's a good thing. It's like Shiva, you know, who burns down the destroyer so something new can come along. 
if you're in a career valley in the 90s, right, are you at that point thinking, oh, crap, I'm going to be irrelevant, or are you like, crap, I'm going to die broke, or is it a little bit of both? I was thinking, hey, uh, I better get my ass out there and hustle. So that's what I did. Yeah. Is it motivation from fear or is it motivation from... Fear, yeah. yeah fear, fear is a great motivator. I agree with Fantastic that. Fantastic motivator. Yeah. Probably the best one we have. I, th- I think you're probably right. At least for someone like me, yeah. it's like that fire yeah. burning behind me, it's not... Co- There's a little bit of fire, you know, internal, like driven ambition, like you said, but some of it is just it's going to catch you. Yeah, and, and your fear doesn't have to be based on anything that's logical. No. Or it's even really not. real, as long as you feel it. Yeah, so, yeah. Use it, in, and it doesn't just over uh, yeah. consume you in some way. Yeah. Yeah, you got to learn how to control it. How do you control it then? I mean, or you, you let just, go. You just like of the outcome. You let go. Like right before you go on stage, if you got, I still have, I get, uh, st- you know, stage fright or jitters or whatever. Do you really? Oh yeah, yeah. Especially when I'm doing something I'm new, and uh, so just right before go on stage and just take that fear and put it right down because it really makes you focus. Take a breath, maybe a prayer, and just let go and step out. You've done like a hundred, literally like a hundred movie roles, right? And you yeah. still feel jitters when the, is it the lights, the cameras? What is it? I don't know so much about that. I, uh, like the first day I might, you know, getting to learn the crew and kind of feeling uncomfortable. You're, it takes me about three or four days to, to really feel like I fit in with the crew and the, and the character really started to take shape mm-hmm. from what I thought it was to the actual reality of you know, where, where the location was, who are the other people, and things like that. You ever get intimidated working with someone else? Like, oh, man, they're really good. I hope they think I'm good, too. Do you have that sort of judgment voice in your head? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, Sure. In music and in acting, more so in music, really, because I, I, I you know, I, uh, you know, I was more focused on, on acting. That was the thing that really paid the bills. Yeah. So this being your second music, being your second act, it's like, am I, am I the real deal, or am I just one of those guys who's like, hacking it and everyone's humoring me? Like I would be, I worry about yeah, things like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but it's, it's amazing how the very best people. Are the easiest people to work with, really? The or they, are. they, they are. are the the easiest people to work with because there's uh, they acting is reacting. And if they're so good, if you just let go react, it's it just winds up being easy. That's something I think non actors like me don't really kind of fully comprehend. You know, let, let like for me, it just seems kind of terrifying to work with anybody who's really good at something because I. I can't turn that voice off, or I haven't been able to turn that voice off. That's like, better pull your weight, man. Yeah, well, the voice is always going on in your yeah. head, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you have to tell it to shut up. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. The only time it turns off is, like, maybe right now. But that's because if I have it going now, I'm screwed. This Like, you were intimidated so... about doing this interview with me, and now you're getting kind of used to it? Yeah, I mean, on the plane, I was like, don't blow it. <laughs> is there anything I can do about that? No, no, no. It's it's <laughs> it's before literally, like, any interview, too. It could be, like, a scientist. Unless I really don't. It's a good yeah, sign. Yeah, I really get, yeah, when I talk to really substantial people. Yeah. Like, you know, politicians uh, who I admire, or there's not many to admire these yeah, days, by the way. Which one and, that? Or, uh, <laughs> Or, or uh, you know, great, great figures that, you know, that uh, I grew up, you, you meet them and, yeah, it gets a little, I feel small. I think that, yeah, I think that's like a universal feeling that everyone probably has, especially any kind of creative personality you always will have that. Yeah. And I know that you've said you, th- I've heard you say you think mythically for your characters, you create a backstory and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still do this? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Are you writing it down? Is it all in your head? I used to. I used to fill up notebooks with that. But um, I used to, in acting, you're always playing yourself, no matter what. I mean, you can lose yourself, supposedly, in a character and all that, but you're still you doing that. For instance, like <clears throat> when you see uh, The Godfather, you, you don't see... The Godfather, you see Marlon Brando. Sure, yeah. You know, it's Marlon Brando. 
that's and he'll always be Marlon Brando in every movie. And uh, the only thing that makes a difference is because it's Marlon Brando playing that part. If you put Jack Nicholson in it, it'd be very different. Sure. Because it'd be Jack Nicholson. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, losing yourself in a part is something that non-actors for sure don't understand. I mean, I, when I see Joaquin Phoenix and Joker, <clears throat> I'm like, is that what's happening there? Because he's very, he's so good, but he's also very strange in interviews. Maybe like, a little bit. Yeah. That's why they chose him. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm not playing the Joker. No, it would be. Because I don't really give that off. I, no, it would be kind it's of. It's a sight of your person. more of a Bruce Wayne than a it's, Joker. <laughs> yes, I guess you're right. As long as I'm not Robin. But. <laughs> Uh, or Commissioner Gordon, but uh, yeah, you're, it's it's always like a piece of your personality. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, intellectually, I do. Mm-hmm. Me acting will probably never. I mean, even now, basically just who I am, even at home, I just have better questions and uh, and it, fewer dad jokes. Fewer, my, fewer dad jokes. Dad jokes. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the. You sure about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not. <laughs> It's the same here. Yeah. I, yeah, I use my best material on my 11-year-olds, and uh, I just get the, you know, the stare back, like, yeah, waiting for the punchline. Do you think internally the they're laughing and they just don't want to give you the no. satisfaction? No. No? Damn. no, no, they're really, they can't help but be honest about it. Damn, I was kind of hoping, like, eyes. they secretly think I'm really funny. They just don't want to give me the satisfaction of laughing. Yeah. Uh, Keep lying to yourself. The hardest yourself. place to get respect is at home. We all know <laughs> yeah, that, right? Yeah. you got I, kids. I, I do, but he's only three months old. But I have, oh. like, cousins and oh, nieces. Oh, welcome and to the club. Stuff. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. He's three months old. He doesn't do much. He grabs and yeah. cries. The I rest of your life is over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it. It's all about him. Yeah. That's the wonderful thing about it, isn't it? Yeah. That you have to uh, – I guess the great thing that kids teach is that you take the attention off of your uh, yourself, which we're all prone to do. Yeah. And you put it on someone else. It's nice because I have an ex- I have like a really good reason to get rid of all this narcissistic bullshit of mm-hmm. like my I've got to have this many on Instagram and mm-hmm. worry about it's like right. look, focus on this stuff. This is important. And then that relationship with him is the most important. Right. And then ever- and with my wife and all, with all, your wife. All this other actually crap. W- Relationship yeah. with the wife comes first, I think. I think you're right about because that. Because if mom ain't happy, nobody's happy. Plus, nobody takes care of mom, right? You're take, if you're both taking care of the kid, then yeah, she's kind of neglected, and that's that's the end of that. That's right. Nobody wants that. I've I've heard that when you're on screen, you err on the side of doing too much, and the director pulls you back in. Yeah. So what does that really mean? Uh, that means, like, you know, get out there and go over the top. Um <clears throat> Like overacting, kind of. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's what will come out is like overacting, maybe not on the stage, but in a, you know, on film, you see every little twitch and every little. And so I like to go out there and really just do something over the top. Even I don't mind being bad. You, know, you got all kinds of film, and uh, if I'm working, you know, with the right director, of course, you know, they're going to protect me if I trust them. Yeah, and the director is the one who's looking, watching you. But he's the one that's telling the story, and uh, so he'll just bring him back in. So I'll do maybe one or less, and one in the middle, and I'm ready. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Do you think you became a better actor when you had kids because you could let go of some of that other stuff that we were talking about before? I don't know. No, hard to say, right? Um, eh, I don't know. I feel like I'm becoming a better interviewer just because I have more shit to talk about. But that's pretty much it. Yeah. There's more to relate to that's not just my own stuff. And that's more interesting for other people, I think. Something we all share. And certainly, you know, about I saw <laughs> I saw Al Pacino. He's played a couple of dads. This is back in the 70s. And I didn't really believe him as a dad. He doesn't have kids, right? Uh, he, he may now, but back then he did not have kids. And uh, it... There's something about it. You know, If you, it's like you really got to have that experience to kind of like have that feel, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. You had kids in The Parent Trap, right? I mean, not the movie, but before uh, that? In in films, yes. In, but in real life, I mean, you had your kids. Uh, yes, I have 27-year-old Well, now, Jack. You, yeah. But when you did The Parent Trap movie, uh, you Jack was, I think, four or five years old. Right. So yeah. you, you could be yeah. – because I was going to say, you're a believable dad in that movie. Yes. I don't know. In fact, I was the dad for – yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that makes more sense. 
that makes more sense because otherwise you're right there's something played that's a lot not... of dads played a few coaches i could see that too you know. yeah the like coach seeking redemption kind of thing maybe a little <laughs> <laughs> yes coach second chances yeah coach seeking redemption which is a great story well you've said that once the cameras are on you you can read your mind you don't actually have to act what is that sounds cryptic to non-actors. Like, what does that mean? Does that sort of go back to what you mean by, hey, you're playing yourself? It just sort of comes out? I don't learn the lines. You, I mean, I know the script. I've read the script maybe three or four times and really thought about it. But going onto the set that day, I really don't know the, know the lines. Because in film, you're going to shoot, what, two, three, page scene, right? And so it, I listen to the other person what they're saying, and that kind of tells me where where they're going and what I'm going to say. Makes you a better listener. So you're kind of improvising that? Stuff, no, or? I'm just sitting there. I'm just trying to be, be in the frame and just be, you know, paying attention to what's going on and knowing the character. See, I know the character, but uh, it's, it's, it's about listening. And then I'm, I'm lucky I'm able to... I've always been like that. I've been able to uh, memorize things pretty quickly. So you don't you don't memorize the lines before you go in, did I, or did I misunderstand? No, I don't. So you just I've do... read the scene. I mean, okay. read it, but I really don't really have a. Wow, that's incredible. How much of acting is improvised like that versus like? Well, it's not script? improvising. It's just listening. Yeah. yeah. And after about two or three rehearsals of going through it, you're blocking it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're listening to what they say, then you react because acting is reacting. So somebody has to start, though, right? You know, somebody, <laughs> so, so is somebody there well, like, oh, yeah, you do have great. your starting point, and you got the script supervisor over there, and they're like, "Here's Dennis. Yeah. for sure didn't learn any of those." Yeah, what do you think, De Niro? I think De Niro, like, you know, those, like, uh, like, hey, you talking to me? You talking to me? I know you're talking to me. You must be talking to me because he's just vamping. I think because he didn't. <laughs> Didn't know the lines, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, just does a lot until it comes up. Yeah, yeah, that that is kind of funny. I, I I feel like you can only get away with that when you've hit a certain stature, though. Otherwise, you're just that guy who like never bothers yeah. to learn the free lines. Yeah, that's lines. true. Yeah, so I you have used that, to go out so, there and know the entire script before sure. I got there. When because I wanted to be asked back. Maybe that's why it's more fun now. Because you show up and you go, they're not going to fire me. I can listen really well. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> you don't know about that? Yeah. I don't know about Maybe that. it's good not to be. Yeah, you really can't be thinking that <clears throat> I'm above all this. Yeah. We've yeah. seen how that works out with other yeah. people, too. Yeah. Yeah. Just try being two hours late. <laughs> yeah. Four times in a row. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think they're going to. Yeah, that, that somebody will draw the line there. Yeah, they're going to take umbrage of that. You use a lot of different accents in many of your films. I'm curious how you learn and practice those. Uh, my brother and I grew up. Um, doing impersonations like uh, Ed Sullivan and John Wayne and, uh, you know, everybody that was around us. So I think that's the whole voice thing. And plus being sense. able to travel so much in my my life that I pick up wherever I go, I pick up on accents uh, badly even, you know. Like in India, I will be talking. Oh, man. Is this the way? <laughs> A little bit, you know. And... Uh, it's, it's, it's just kind of like, it's something I kind of can't help a little bit. Yeah, I, I feel... just pick up on other people's I've done that voices. before and had friends go, I think you're making fun... That was weird. You're making fun of the cab driver. I'm like, I'm not making fun no. of him. <laughs> and like, you're talking like the cab driver who's from Samoa or something. So it makes no sense. It's not like an Irish accent or anything. Like it. It, it just creeps in subconsciously. Yeah, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody or anything like that. I've, I guess subconsciously, I'm just fascinated by voices. Are you the guy that hears one on TV and then spends the rest of the week annoying everybody in the house uh, by doing it? I prepare in secret. So, like, you're in the shower going, one more, Jimmy. One more, Jimmy. Hey, Hootman, one more. <laughs> I can't get her to go, cool, Captain. That one's awesome. That's definitely good. Yeah, that's there's a reason you get paid the big bucks for these, and I don't. That's for sure. I heard you studied Mandarin, too. There's no way no, you can do that's, that. No, actually, I don't know how that creeped into it's my in bio. Wikipedia, yeah. That was, like, creeped like, into my bio, like, something like 35 years ago, and it, it stayed there. So it's just not true. All, I've even had attempts to remove it, please. I, I don't speak Mandarin. I've never 
it's broken, attempted to, but it's still there. God, yeah, it's in your it's in your IMDb. Studied Mandarin at yeah. like university or high school, maybe. I yeah, like Jim Morrison saying his parents were dead. You know, it's just never just never goes away. Uh, well, it's just something that sticks, and they print the legend. That's that's yeah. true. I know you like to learn everything there is to about to be about the person you're playing. You kind of mentioned that earlier. I'm fascinated with real people playing. So uh, what's the process? Real people, real stories. What's the process like? like? What resources are you using to do that? What was it like before Google, for example? You can't just be like, eh, tell right. me everything about Wyatt Earp. Like, right. You had to do it manually. You actually had to use it like a telephone and yeah. get out a telephone book and, you know, and track people down. Uh, I guess the first time that really happened to me was Gordo Cooper in The Right Stuff. It was my first like real person. And uh, turned out he lived three miles from me in L.A. So, wow. Yeah. Just, he was, he like, he was, a, he was the, the he was one of the Mercury 7 astronauts. The last person actually to fly alone in space from uh lift off to uh splashdown. And he was up there 3 days and uh what a great guy. He was my hero when I was a kid. And I went over and met him and I just you know watched the way he walked and uh you know kind of get a general idea about how he is in life, you know, you know how we feel basically inside sure. ourselves. If we're basically confident, or basically this, or basically happy, or basically whatever, you know. And uh, then I, I try to capture the spirit of a person. If not, you know, I'm not going to really look at, like him. And you also have the script that you're doing, sure. which is not all factual. Yeah, that somewhat fictional. That would be way too up. much. Because I mean, even my life is not all factual. Apparently not. You don't even yeah. know Mandarin. <laughs> yeah. Like, who am I even talking to right now? And, uh, so I just try to capture the spirit of that person and I think a little bit about what if somebody did my story. Yeah. There's a certain respect that goes with that. I try to tell, try to do the character from their point of view because that's what we're doing right here, isn't it? Yeah. You that, and me. That's a good point, right? Because you don't want to do it from, there's no reason to do it from anyone else's perspective. No, otherwise you're editorializing on him. Yeah, which could be kind of offensive. I mean, some people might think it's cool because you're playing them up, but other it's also inaccurate, which is, like, less useful yeah. somehow. Yeah, that makes sense. Aside from the script, are you looking for other resources? Aside from the script and the person, like, if I'm interviewing an author here on the show, I read the book, talk to their friends if I can, mm-hmm. uh, watch them talk about their work with mm-hmm. other people, because you get a different angle than right. just the source, right? Right. Yeah, a little bit of the mystery is kind of... The curtain is. Yeah. Well, I learned, uh, I went to see Gordo, and then because of that, I learned to fly. Uh, he gave me an instructor to call over at uh, Van Nuys Airport, and I went over there, and it was Bud Wallen. And Bud Wallen at that time in the 80s was 74 years old. I think it was about three years younger than aviation itself. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I, I was afraid to fly, but I learned to fly. Which helped me wow. with a radio voice, which is what all those guys had on that radio. You know, the talking into the four five four Delta Quebec. Yeah. That's awesome. Landing with Charlie, so um, you built that from the from yeah. flying your own plane. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, Bud's but, plane at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, one of the instru- he was an instructor. But, you had your own plane though, did you not? Or you still do? Yes, I had. Uh, I made it all the way. I kept going. I made it up to. To jets, uh, flying uh, citation jets. Those are, I, my friend had one of those, and he goes, the only thing I regret more than selling that jet for the price I sold it is buying that jet for the price that I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was very lucky that uh, I didn't lose, where you were it eats up money. They're so darn convenient. Yeah, I'm sure. But they just suck every dollar you have out. And the most expensive part of flying is when the plane is in the hangar. Oh, yeah, Because sure. it's not being used. So your price per hour goes way up. Oh, man, I didn't even think about Cause that. Because you're still paying insurance. and Sure. All that. Boy, this is a fascinating subject matter, isn't well, it? Well, I mean, I, I think it's I'm going to start to sell you some insurance. Here, so. <laughs> yeah, for the plane that it's I'll It's going to be surprisingly have. painless. Are there real people in the stories you're performing on set with you? Like, when do you have Gordo stand there and go, eh, it's not really what I did, or, or at least just watching you do it? Um, <clears throat> Gordo never came to set, but uh, Jerry Lee did. 
he was there every day over my shoulder saying, you're getting it wrong, son. Oh, that'd be an, yeah. Does but he was also one of my piano teachers. Really? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, he'd slow it down and show me, show me licks and, and uh, it was, uh, gosh, that was an incredible time. I bet, yeah. Does that affect the performance? I mean, obviously, this is a dumb question. Of course it affects the performance if he's saying you're getting it wrong, son, over your shoulder. I'd feel self-conscious even if they weren't saying Oh, anything. for sure it did. Yeah, finally. Because there was a little bit of a... <laughs> there was a little bit of a, of a schoolyard bully in him. I've yeah. heard that. You hear and, that. Yeah, and it was also, he's a perfectionist. He, he really wanted it to be right. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him. You know, um, and uh, so I didn't play piano a year before I got that. I was, I was lucky. I, for one thing, I was on cocaine back in those days, and so I sat at the piano for twelve hours a day. And that's you all really I did. You get really good at the piano, yeah. Yeah. That so just the piano then. Yeah, in the end, we he and I wound up doing uh, two duets. Was he doing cocaine for, uh, with you on the piano? What? Was he doing cocaine with you on the piano? No, he didn't do cocaine. No? No. Oh, that surprises me I don't know me what somehow. he did. You don't know what he did? I don't know what he did. Gotcha. I'm not going to speak for him. Yeah, I don't blame you. you that would be... Mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Now, I he would... had a stroke uh, about nine months ago. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Uh, no, that's less. He's recovering, and I think he's going to come back. He's 87 years old. God, that's... Some of these guys, like... It just lasts forever. Keith, Keith, there's that joke with Keith Richards where like Adam, or Adam and Eve are there with God, and it's like, who's right. that? Yeah, you know, he right. was here when I got here. Yeah, everybody thought that Jerry would be the first to go, Keith too, and we're probably gonna out, outlast everybody. Yeah, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, do you ever bring your work home with you? I mean, it seems like I used to. Yeah, I don't anymore. Do no, that, that that really does. That's how that's how you wind up in rehab and stuff like that, or um. You have to drop. I for me, I have to drop it. I used to live the role and stuff like that all just about all the time, and uh, it's just too much. I found that I could actually be better if I would just like drop it like a hot potato, mm -hmm. even in between takes. Not even think about it in between takes, and just wow. come back to it. You just come back with a clear, clear head that way. What tools do you use to get into character quickly? Then, if you're dropping in and out of it even between takes, nothing. Nothing. You no, just, you just try to, to be there. That's all. You just try to be there. So when it's when it's rolling, you're there. When it's not rolling, you're yeah. back to yourself because you're present. You're not thinking about the. You focused and you're just be there in the frame. That's why they hired you. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's why you they know? hire you. Yeah, they're not gonna hire me for that. Well, they would hire you for a specific type. You know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's <clears> true. Even if you had no, no lines or anything. You look like this, and we're going to have – she's going to come up, and she's going to proposition you, and we'll see what – you know what I mean? And yeah. you'll react like you. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe right. you'll turn red, you that know, sounds right. whatever. You know, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. You you know, or maybe it. you'll turn it on and you come right – but that's why they hired you because you naturally, although you may not be that way, but on the outside, people have a tendency to type people. That's for sure true, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I told my wife today. She goes, "Why don't you wear that orange shirt?" And I was like, "It looks like a, those are like dad clothes." She goes, "That's fine. He has kids. That's what she said." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." And then you show up in like yeah. this cool leather jacket. And I'm like, yeah. "Fuck! I knew it. I yeah. knew it. I yeah. should have worn something cool." <laughs> just like, yeah, I had these pair of Merrells that I wore for like 12 years during my dad years. It I thought they were pretty cool until I found out they weren't. <laughs> yeah, you find, find out the hard way. Like, hey, yeah. Dad, we threw away your shoes because we're sick of looking at them. Oh, yeah. man. Dang it. Yeah. When you're playing someone. Hey, I'm just going to dress like Seinfeld. Yeah, that worked <laughs> for him. When you're playing someone with serious emotional issues, like the abusive father in that film, I can only imagine. Do yeah. you, you, you don't stay in character all day, huh? You oh, have for to sure. Uh, for sure not. In fact, it's really. I like to keep a distance uh, in it in between. In between takes, just complete emotional distance. I just don't. I I don't like to push emotion. What do you mean? Because I feel like I'm lying if I push emotion. If emotion is just happens to me, then it happens. Like these scenes, you know, where you feel like you know, like it says in the script, you know, tears stream down his face. Oh you yeah. Know, <laughs> you know that. So I used to really try that about like 
getting work up and really thinking about my past and experiences and stuff like that. I'm telling you, I'm getting nothing, you know. And uh, uh, now I just don't even think, whether it happens or it doesn't happen, at least tell them the truth about the way you are in that moment right there. That's what it is to me. It's more believable that way. Like, I can't, you're right. If you push emotion, but it's not really part of you, it's it comes across as like, He's trying. To, yeah, like yeah. A, he's he's trying to have his big cry moment right. here. You know, working you, himself up. Yeah, you wonder if someone came by and they're like, Dennis, tilt your head back, and like they put in drops in there, and you're just like blinking no, it I've out. Gone, I've gone to that too. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to see, that's that's fine. But you know, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm gonna push it. And I found that when I gave it up, it was so much easier. Oh man, I bet. You know what yeah. I cry at? What's that? When something's so beautiful. That's a good thing, though, right? I feel yeah, like I'm I do that now. With with beauty. It just makes me cry. That's a good. About that's how a beautiful good. life is, or how, how wonderful something is. I, you know, can't believe. I don't think a lot of guys. I don't think a lot of guys allow themselves to go to that place because they they conflate that with like an oh, yes, unhealthy they do. vulnerability. I've yeah? seen it in my yeah the movies I do, Frequency. You know, their father's son or something like that. It's because they really think a lot of it and they see this story, which is it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. Maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe you know guys that are more comfortable going to that place because they're working artists. I don't know Silicon Valley where I'm from. I'm not sure how much emotional accessibility we deal with. I've had a lot of people come up to me since I can only imagine and tell me that uh, they really had a profound effect on them because it was their story, which wow that was a waker upper for me, and uh, or say like the rookie, you know they started playing baseball because of that or my dad was just like that you know mm. uh, you know what I mean yeah I saw the I saw the uh, some YouTube video that you were in and the top comment was about this and somebody was like my son passed away this movie helped us get through it that's there's a lot of people were saying that underneath the trailer I think for the movie which has to I mean that has to affect you in some way as well well it certainly does um, yes it really does Really, as a, as a, as an actor or whatever, you know, that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to communicate people, relate to people, and uh, sometimes you don't know where that's coming from, but um, yeah, that's why it's 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 about uh, that's what our all art is really. It's about work at the bit. There's about the big things in life, really. Yeah, well, you know, it's like war or peace or it's. Uh, you know, comedy, you know, making people laugh and stuff, you know, just for a few minutes. It's escapism. That's why it's so important. People need to escape their lives. That's for sure true. You know? Yeah. What do you think about your son also being in the business? Knowing the ups and downs of it yourself, having Jack go, hey, man, I want to be an actor. It was really obvious at the beginning. His uh, mother is Meg Ryan. Yeah. And right. never pushed him and never let him be a child actor. But he had a video camera in his, uh, you know, on his shoulder. <laughs> that was back in those days, uh, when, from the time he was like four years old, and it was just a natural thing for him. And he's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said you never let him be a child actor. No, we didn't want him to want him to be a kid. Mm. You know, yeah. Have a childhood first. You do see. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you know, but yeah. it's just kind of the way I wanted to go. You do see a lot of child actors seem like they never got a chance to just like go throw spitballs at, uh, and play soccer in the backyard like they're working. Yeah, true. Which is strange for me having grown up in Michigan with no child actor friends. Right, right. They're just like yeah. aliens now. When yeah, I meet them. Yeah, I thought that's what I would go with. I would go with kind of my own childhood, which is what we do. I think. Yeah, we go with our own childhood to raise our. Other kids, including well, I'm not going to be that way yeah. with my kids the yeah. way the way my parents were. I'm going to screw my kids. There are a few times up. I'm going. Oh, yeah. now I understand why they were that way. Definitely, yeah. Like I, I want to screw my kid up in my own way, not not in the way my dad and mom did. <laughs> yeah, got my own brand of dysfunction yeah. to push on. Yeah. <laughs> when you married Meg Ryan, her career took off slightly after that. Did, you, did that affect your marriage in any sort of negative way? Like I, I know. There's probably some dialogue of like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. There's probably some dialogue of what? Yeah, just people saying like, 
oh, well, you know, look how well she's doing. Well, we know who pays that mortgage. I don't think people literally say that, but it seems like I would worry about that. Only the haters. The haters? Well, um, yeah, I have to, I have to, if I'm to be honest, I really have to admit that Meg and I, we had a beautiful relationship, and we were together for 13 years. And when we first met, you know, I was the, I was the one with my 15 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, Big there cheese. on the, on the, on the, on the, on the actor of the moment, you know, mm-hmm. I guess. But, and uh, during our relationship, that got transcended. And she did Harry Met Sally and uh, you know, Sleepless in Seattle and all those, and. Uh, you know, I'd gone to rehab and gotten myself straight and clean. And I thought, well, now things are going to really work out okay. And they don't. Uh, you know, oh, you have man. to, yeah, it turns into like uh, not working for a year uh, just to get on my feet. And then that turned into two. And then maybe choosing the wrong thing. And uh, so I, uh, I started to feel a little bit like I was disappearing. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, if I'm really going to be honest yeah. about it, you know what I mean? I thought, well, I'm never going to be. I'm too big of a person to ever feel that way, you know. But uh, I, yeah, I did. I feel, you know, feel uh, like a little bit like I was disappearing. Did it scare you to make you more angry or something else? Um, I think it, I guess it made me sad. It, but I also felt like, oh, well, I can't admit this. Sure. You know I, I mean, you know what I mean? Not to, especially not to your wife. Yeah. Well, but it's at the same time, it's so obvious. Like you're the last pr- you, maybe everyone. Yeah, we're walking down the streets in New York, and everybody's going, "Mug, hey, Mug," you know, or they come up and you know have me hold their purse while I. <laughs> while you take, yeah. <laughs> take a, a, well, I guess they didn't have camera phones back then. Like, hey, can you take a picture? Well, of it was really us? funny the first couple of times, but uh, you know that's that's what it was. I think it was probably a really good lesson for me in life. Just so, like a little humility yeah, or something. I mean, we all go through everything, you know, I mean, whether we admit it or not. Yeah. We're yeah. all pretty we're all pretty shallow. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. We're self serving and uh self involved down there at the bottom of it all. Did that affect your marriage at all? Was it like, uh no, it's fine that she's getting all the Well Yeah, limelight. yes, I, yes, it did. And uh but but the real thing was you know, we're Raising Jack, and uh, we wanted to keep his routine right, and so she would go off and do a film, and then I would go off and do a film, and that was back before they had these slick, great cameras. So you know, a movie would take maybe four or five months sometimes instead of you know, instead of eight weeks or oh, man. five weeks to do, and uh, so you know, there was a lot of separation. Sure, and yeah. that was. That was, I think that was the thing. Might have been better for more Jack that you were around more then, huh? What's that? It was probably better for Jack that you were around more then at that time. Oh, that that's the <clears throat> that's the wonderful part of it. That, uh, you know, I really got to be the kind of dad that I wanted to be. Yeah, without, yeah. without being like, I, I guess if you're not suffering from a lot of FOMO or anything at the time and you've got a great kid, then you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. I think most of being a dad is just being there. But that's really, uh, that's most of it. It's yeah. a, it's a comforting thing to kids. Just I, being there that definitely makes sense. And that you know, a lot of a lot of dads have told me the same thing. Like, don't panic about being super dad all the time. Just show up. Yeah, really. Just fucking show up. You know, and then you have I still have to do your job. And well, yeah. You know, keep up your relationship with your partner. I know music's a big part of your life. You wrote a few songs for three of your films, been in a band for like 20 years. Same guys. Same uh, guys. For 19 years this Halloween, like a couple of days from now. Oh, right? well, happy yeah. bandiversary. <laughs> well, that's really good. I you like could that. steal that. I, <clears throat> I definitely think I just made that up just now. Really? Yeah. Maybe. I think you did too. I've never heard it before. I've also never heard it. Wow. It just came out. Yeah. See what happens when you relax? That's right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, with same night, uh, same guys for 19 years. Before that, I had a, I've always had a band, really, and I've been a songwriter, I guess, since I was 12, because I knew I was never going to be like a shredder on a guitar, and so songwriting was sort of my defense, you know, because when you start out playing guitar, it's all about the girls. Sure. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah oh, I <laughs> and, do. Yes. 
And so, uh, so, but I, so I've always been a writer, and um, but I had a band uh, which was basically Bonnie Raitt's band back in the '80s called the Eclectics. You should see those photos. Oh man! Yeah, I and, saw the uh, photos of them now. I can only imagine what they looked like <laughs> forty years ago. But that was a different ago. band. And then uh, uh, around uh, two thousand, that was it. Halloween two thousand. Uh, we started uh, the 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 sharks because your kid made it. Or, well, Jack yes, came up with it. It was Shark Week, and really? we were looking it was for actually... we, we were looking for a name for the band, and he was like nine. He, what should we name our band? He says Sharks. Good. And so I always say, thank God it wasn't Dinosaur. Week. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably good. That's dad the line jokes. I always use. Good dad joke, man. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that one in my back pocket. I found it a little surprising that you like Lil Wayne, or is that also some bullshit? I do like Lil Wayne. I think okay. he's a genius, man. I really do. It's a little Stuff unexpected. That spots, you know uh, how you take Lil Wayne is, you know, is is another thing. But the the stuff that just spouts out of his head, you know, um, he's coming from his own authentic experience in life. You know, without any kind of judgment about what that is, it's, uh, you know, that's where he's coming from. And man, he can do a hard run. Mm, amazing. I mean, there's things you just never forget that he says, like, yes, I am wheezy, but I ain't asthmatic. And you just go, yeah. wow. And that stuff so is just good. He's spouting out of it. Yeah. 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 It's uh, like Notorious B.I.G. had that effect, too. Yeah. You ever listen to that? Well, I can just do it. And, uh, and Tupac. Yes. Tupac was it. For yeah. Me. I think I still have pretty much He's every single favorite. word memorized off of the two All Eyes on Me double CD. Mm -hmm. Just back and forth in my car. I did a movie with Tupac. What? It's Which called one? gang related. Really? Yeah. Were you uh, a police officer in the movie? No, I was a, a uh, itinerant uh, bum on the street in downtown L.A. Uh, okay. Who turned out to be this very wealthy surgeon doctor who would you know just had gone out in the street because his his life blew up. But uh, he played Tupac played a cop with Jim Belushi, and uh, I didn't know who Tupac was back then. I was not into rap music really zero and uh he was just another he was another actor i mean i've been told you know but he was like 24 and we wound up like having lunch together like every day we we both loved chinese food so we ordered it every day because <laughs> we were down there trying it down and sure. we just wound up like talking maybe it's a good thing i didn't know like a bunch of stuff about him because i had no you know we talked about our moms we were both very close to our moms you know Maybe in different ways, but very wow. yeah, and we, and we talked about about life and you know acting and a little bit of his you know background in it and all that stuff and kind of, I, he was a fantastic guy. He was he was very smart. He was uh, had he was very sensitive. He was very funny, and uh, God, I think he would have had an incredible career. I think as so as both in, in music and in uh, in acting. He was such a good actor. He was a super hard worker, too, by yeah. all accounts. He right? didn't assume anything. He was very, you know, he'd be, he was on the set and he was ready to work and ready to go. You know, no bullshit, just, you know, himself and uh, very professional. That's, uh, that stuff is amazing. I mean, when you, when you see that and then you see, like, oh, he got shot by some th punk. That happened like. What, four months later? It must have been really this quickly like after. Shock. Because he was like still a kid when he died. I mean, he was, I think he was... He was 24, 24 years old, right? Yeah, yeah oh, I right. Mean, so, incredible. He's done more... Well, so was James than... Dean. He was 24. Oh, Buddy yeah. Holly was 24. Oh, man. Yeah. Makes That makes me feel like I got to get after it. If I'm, I mean, these guys did more... Hank before. Williams was, what, 29? Yeah, that sounds about right. And you look at their body of work. Yeah. And, you just, and your jaw drops. 27 for musicians is like a terrible sort of curse yes. number too, right? Yeah. Yeah, is it 27 or 3? Yeah, it is 27. Jim Morrison, Mama Cass. Uh, Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. Jimi Hendrix. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tr it's almost, I don't know. It's, it's a whole different show, I think. As an artist, do you think that you need a wide variety of inputs to create your best output? Like you... Little Wayne, Tupac, and then that goes in, and then something up here happens, and you create better. I just, uh, I, I don't necessarily think so because you know people have made a 
career out of one one thing. But I'm just – I grew up in Houston, which is sometimes called – you know, Houston, Texas, which is sometimes called West Louisiana. <laughs> you know, you have a very uh, diverse uh, music background if you come from there. You know, you got all that – Cajun music and come and jazz coming over from from Louisiana. You know, you've definitely got country and western mm-hmm. music. And my dad was really into you know Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby and uh, and the like, and um, a lot of church music. I mean, it's, it was so varied. And the, the, of course, we all went Beatlemania crazy when they came out. So very diverse. Is it true that you play? With your band in bare feet? Yes, when we first started out. What's up with that? That was, <laughs> well, I, I felt like I was in my living room. But that was uh, probably, looking back, a device I used because I didn't feel all that confident up there. Okay. So you, oh, so you wanted to be like, I'm I figured home. I would try to be, uh, I would try to be, uh, I would try to be anonymously b- as bad as I could. You know, I didn't really want to take it, really bring it uh, to record in the state. That's the reason we waited like 18 years to record a record. Wait, <laughs> yeah, we did. yeah, we waited 18 years to record it because I, I wanted to give myself um, time to be to be bad, make mistakes, and really, uh, and I did. It seems like a gross thing to do at a bar. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, like... Yes, it is, especially if when it comes to cut feet, which I never had. But uh, there was blood on the stage sometimes, but not from my feet. Not from your feet? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It was probably a device that I was using. That's so— Because I did not feel all that confident. Do you not wear shoes in your house? You're barefoot at home? Uh, no, I like to wear shoes. Just not when you play music? Yeah, I like to— Just— Well, I'm, I wear shoes. I've been wearing shoes now— uh, for a good uh, a good uh, ten years uh, on stage, so I could tell you that I have more confidence up there. Now. That makes sense. Yeah. How do you come up with a device like that? Like who goes, who comes up with that kind of thing? Is it like something you hear? Like oh, you know this guy, he doesn't wear shoes. I don't know. It just happened one night as a lark, and so I kept it. And the, you know, because then a bunch of people mentioned it, and so I thought, well, I'll keep it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be the guys you. that doesn't wear shoes up right. there. Yeah. It's hard to hit the football, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Yeah. The Beastie Boys, they don't wear shirts. I won't wear shoes. How come you never had a Hollywood meltdown? Like, where's the Dennis Quaid tape of you losing your shit at some lighting guy? I saw one, but it looked oh, fake. But I, did a, I did that hoax. I saw that. Where, where yeah, I actually had people, I had people going for about three days. It was a Funny or Die video. Ah, uh, yeah. That we did, where we set it up and shot it like I was doing a movie. And, uh, you know, the, I wind up just having a meltdown of the set over the slightest little bitty thing and somebody secretly doing the audio on it. Mm-hmm. And so we leaked that out there. And, of course, everybody, uh, you know, TMZ and all of those that he uh, picked up on it. And, uh you know, well, he's back on drugs, or he's this, or he's that, or whatever he is. You know, we let it go for like two days until we released the what really happened. You so know, you which like was a, a comedy skit, actually, by the way. And then all the talk shows and everything helped us. You know, we used like you know Billy Bush on Extra or whatever it was mm-hmm. at the time, and Jimmy Kimmel, of course, gave us quite a, a boost. And uh, it was just funny. It is funny, yeah. especially like I mean, it's like you got these two zombies whispering in each other's ears. Yeah, I'm a fucking pro. This is really, yeah. And a bunch of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like we'll link it in the show notes. I think I believe it it's ends. A, with, it's very funny. I believe it ends with "blow me" and the door. Yeah, slamming. blow me, and then I get getting a hair dryer. So. <laughs> All right. Well, tell me about the bear in the banjo before your publicist like throws right. something at me from across the room. Okay. Oh. Uh, I think you've got the buyout rights to my to my story now after so long, right? Uh, Bear and a Banjo is a podcast uh, that I have been a part of and and producing and uh, also uh, acting in. Uh, it was done with Jared Jingle Jared is what I call him, Goodstad, who is my business partner. 
uh, T-Bone Burnett and Bob Dylan, who contributed uh, some lyrics, and Pooh Bear, mm-hmm. who you know, writes for Justin Bieber. And um, it's a true fiction of a story of American musical history. Uh, these two characters, Bear and Banjo, starting from in the 20s when they – Everybody dispersed from New York with their portable, finally, recording machines and started recording and, and uh, uh, you know, music in the country. What if they had passed the Carter family farm and gone 100 miles down the road? What would music sound like now? Uh, you know, if there wasn't a Jimmy Rogers, it was somebody else or, or whatever. But these things – but Baron Banjo show up these seminal moments in American musical history uh, – you know, Little Richard and the birth of rock and roll, the blues, you know, in Chicago and uh, Detroit and uh, even even uh, b- being uh, working with the U.S. Army on sonic warfare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a true fiction. And uh, it's it was a lot of fun to do, a whole lot of fun to do. And it's. Uh, I think it's number two. It's number two. Yeah, it's it has been number there. two behind uh, Dolly Parton's. So, so and uh, very uh, fun to uh, produce. Doesn't I really bet. take a lot of money to do a podcast. Now you know why I'm in yeah. the business. And yeah. you, you, you can exactly. And who knows where it goes from there? So, so far, so good. Yeah, yeah. it really is sort of like the uh, like when MTV first came out or Sirius Radio. Uh, first came out. Nobody really knows where it's going, but you know it's going somewhere. And uh, I'm talking about podcasts. Sure. Uh, nobody can tell where it's going to be a year from now. And, and the audience increased fourfold over just the last year. Sure. And tell you the truth, a year and a half ago, I really didn't know what a podcast was. I was probably in a couple, <laughs> not yeah. knowing that I was. Sure. But, you know, it really can be anything. It can be a story, a scripted story. A, you know, I want to do, like, radio plays, basically. Yeah, I wonder And, uh, you know, the uh, – that's what – uh, like the script in the drawer. Everybody's got a script in the drawer. That's right. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to stay in great shape to do them, too. You can, wait, by the way, you look like you're in awesome shape. What kind of – work? you got a trainer? What kind of workouts I ride, are you I ride a bicycle a lot. You, I mean, I've just done like it. I've done it for so long. This, is, this old guy, when I was boxing down at uh, Hollywood Y in my twenties, mm-hmm. he said uh, he was in great shape. But I asked him how. He said, "If you do, if you take care of yourself in your twenties and your thirties, the rest will take care of itself." Well, I'm 39. I still got time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's the truth, though. You know, because you form habits, and yeah, that's just what you do. Plus, I'm vain. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you do you wish you you wish you would have done more movies with with Randy with your brother? Um, well, we did several. We did I know, uh, yeah. the Long Riders. We did um, True West uh, off Broadway for a, a year, and between there and Hollywood, and uh, we did uh, <clears throat> kind of a Saturday Night Live thing that was they were going to do it as a primetime show. It was called Primetime, and the. A couple other movies, but uh, I don't have any any regrets. To tell you the truth, yeah, must have been fun being in a movie with your brother. You think you'll ever have you done anything with Jack? No, right? No, uh, kind of intentionally. You know, Jack wanted to. I offered to help him with an agent, and he said, "No, Dad, I want to do it myself." And yeah. then, you know, the first thing he got was Hunger Games, and then he's doing uh, vinyl, you know, with Scorsese, sure. and uh, you know. Now he's got The Boys, which is like maybe the biggest show on TV. It's killing and it. So I have no qualms about asking him for help. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, why don't you have him throw you a little boost over here, man. Throw me a bone. It's <laughs> yeah. fine. I raised Not pride you. at all. Exactly. <laughs> it's the least you could do. No, I'm very, very proud of him. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, as well you should be. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate it. I'm so it. glad to be here. I really had a great time. Same here. Yeah.